Hi, can you hear me right now? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. I just want to check it out um, because I have never used this type of mm -hmm. presentation. So I just want to make yeah. sure like, no right, worry. so I can share my screen, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, you can do like a little practice run right now. This is like a relatively new platform. It's uh, Zoom events. So mm -hmm. sometimes like you have to be updated to like the latest software. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So there should be like a share screen button right in the center yeah. bottom of your laptop screen. It's green. All right. There you go. Do you want to try putting it on the presentation? Um, so when I share the screen, let me just open it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I share the screen, I mean, I want to share the audio as well. Um, um, and then I will be muted. So if you open up your presentation in one of the tabs, there should be an option. If you click on share screen, you should be able to see like every single page that you have open. Okay. Um, no, I just just a quick question here. Mm -hmm. So when I share this, this um, there's an option to share the system audio. Should I take that one? Uh, yes, you should share your audio share. because that way we can hear you. So um, you do want to share your audio. Okay. All right, there we go. So do you think you kind of have a better idea of how it works now? Um, your microphone is off, by the way. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. I have a little bit because when I share that audio, the system audio, I mute it. Oh, okay. Um, do you want to try it without the audio then? Without the audio? Uh, because we can hear you right now. Um, yeah, because I stopped sharing. Okay. Um, so let me just That's check that then. So, for example, um, if okay. I try this. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, so do you want to try sharing your screen with the presentation? And then just try yes. speaking to so see if we can hear you or not. So no audio, um, system audio, right? Okay, so let me share. Um, we'll try it okay. without. When I share my screen, I don't have that option, but um, mm -hmm. we'll see if we can hear you this time. Yeah. Okay. So let's say I'm going to share with you. So um, let me test. Oh yeah, we can hear you right now, actually. If I do not click. Yeah, but I, because I don't click on the audio system audio, and All right. uh, hang on, let me try and see whether the the, the audio works. Mm -hmm. Can you hear the music? No. Yeah, we can't hear that one right now, unfortunately. You can't, right? We can't. Yeah, I think if you're playing anything from the slideshow, you do have to hear your system audio. Oh, okay. So it means that I do not need to click on that because you still can hear the music, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we can only hear you right now and not what's in your slideshow. Uh, hang on. You can hear the, the music from the slideshow as well, right? Yeah. No, not the slideshow, unfortunately, just you. Okay. So um, what happened is I may need to switch back and forth from sharing and not sharing the screen. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? Okay. Let me try and share my screen and see if the microphone turns off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so for yeah, for me, even if I'm sharing sound, it doesn't turn off my microphone. But if you like share your screen with the sound like with your audio, and then you should get an option to just like turn on your microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let me just figure out how I can do it with that sharing option. Okay. I'm not quite sure whether because when I share my screen, it just comes with one option, like to share the system audio. So basically, it means that if I want to share the audio, I just mute myself. Um, mm -hmm. And then I need to switch back. <laughs> OK, maybe that's the quickest way for now. Do you want to try sharing with the So does the system audio, if you share that, does it automatically mute yourself? Um, you mean that if I just recheck the um, box again? I will. OK, I'm going to try testing it out then. And also, I cannot, I cannot um, show the video, right? Uh, sorry, the, the, the camera, because it's when I click on that, I say that it's not animal. Is it the case? OK, um, that's all right then. Um, do you just want to share your screen with the system audio and then play your video and we'll see if we can hear it? All right, so I'll try it one more time. All right. Um, to share this. Yeah, we can hear that. So yeah, we can hear the music, but I think your microphone is turned off right now. So um, I think you can unmute your own microphone. So if you go in your bottom left hand corner, there should be a mute option and you just like click unmute. So you can click on unmute. Perfect. Now try saying something.
Yeah, it still doesn't seem to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. I can only see the mute and unmute button once I stop sharing. So when oh, I'm okay. sharing that with the audio on, it just keep uh, uh, muted. So only okay. when I click the stop sharing, then I can see that button so that I can unmute myself. That's a little mm -hmm. bit of an issue at the moment. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that maybe I just switch back and forth between that for now because uh, I think we don't have much time for the testing thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, are there any videos in your slideshow that you need the audio for? Yeah, it's actually because, you know, marketing is all out <laughs> all kinds of styles and music and things. So that's why I have a couple of, of things going on in my slides. But if mm -hmm. it's not possible, then I should skip that all one right. and just quickly go through it. Or maybe she has with okay. cells, which is a little bit boring, but mm -hmm. um, if you have yeah. If you wanted me to share the slideshow, I could. Like you could send the slideshow to me and then I could on screen share. That's also an option. Yep. But then I need to to ask you to move the slides, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. All right. I think it, it could be a little bit more uh hard to control the slide uh, flow. So I may just right. go with uh, from my end and see. I cannot show my video. So does it mean that when I show the slides, uh, my my camera is not on? Um, so have... right now your camera is off, but when you share your screen, so your main screen will be taken over by the slideshow and not your face. It's just when you stop sharing and whoever's speaking, their image will pop up. Oh, okay. So, so at least they see me from time to time, right? Not not like during the presentation, but it's just like at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, for right now, it doesn't matter because you are going to be screen sharing. Um, you can have your camera on or off. It doesn't really matter. It's up to your choice. Um, yeah, but then when I click on that, it just says you cannot start video because the host has stopped it. Because the host has... Um, what does it say? Yeah, it says I cannot uh, start the video because the horse has stopped it. Oh, um. so that's why I'm saying that whether it's. Um. Okay, I'm not too sure why. This one is web based, right? Because I'm trying to log into using the Zoom apps, but like kept telling me that I need to go back to the web based one. Okay. Um, I think it's all right if your video is off just because you do have the slideshow and that's what's going to be showing on our screen. So is that okay with you? Yeah, a little bit, uh, but it's okay. <laughs> All right. I wish uh, it could be a little bit more uh, informal, like with a face on, but it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'm not sure no, why, because okay. I think I have all permissions on for you. So um, I think if everyone is good, are we ready to start? Um, yes. I mean, we are six minutes behind the schedule time, so she has to go ahead. All right, okay. okay. So what I should do is I should start sharing my screen. So um, our okay. exec member here, Shubham, he will be giving a brief introduction and then he'll pass the spotlight over to you. So he'll tell you when you're able to start. Okay. okay. Cool. All right, so um, welcome back everyone and Thank you for bearing with us as we figure out some technical difficulties there. We will be beginning our first keynote session with Dr. Len Du, who is a lecturer at UW's Stratford School of Interaction Design and Business. Her presentation today will be focused on the evolution of marketing and technology. So without further ado, we'll pass the spotlight over to Len Du now. 
Hello everyone, I hope that you can hear me nice and clear. Um, I have a little bit in, in an issue, so you may not see my real face. I hope that you don't mind um, with that technical issue. So uh, let's get straight into um, our, our conversation today. So let me share, share with you my screen. And here we go. All right. Um, so this is a topic I'd like to have some conversation with you today about marketing evolution. Uh, and we can see here um, my name. Uh, maybe you have a quick introduction from our house already. So you can see uh, and also uh, where I'm working now. So uh, a little bit about myself. Let me just move to the next one. Yeah, um, this is pretty much about me. So as you can see here, um, this is me. Uh, if I have to describe myself, so um, I'm more of the uh, general managers, um, not too much into marketing. Um, so for those who are not um, maybe familiar with me, I guess, from the introduction on the social media page. Um, so I'm very new here, I'm newcomer um, in Canada. So I actually transitioned to this place for uh, uh, one, 120 to, uh, days only. So I travel all the way from half the globe. Um, from, uh, so originally coming from Vietnam, a small country, uh, southeast of Asia. So I come uh, from a small uh, sea town and, and, um, and I grew, I grew up there and then I, I went to different places for my educations, uh, working in different countries in Australia, um, Vietnam, and several other uh, European uh, cities as well. Um, so thank you so much organizers and thank you all those who are here today. Um, this moment just reminds me of um, more than 20 years ago when I was at your age full of uh, dreams of doing something big and hairy. Um, and also this, um, this opportunity also gives, gives me time to reflect on the past 30 years of marketing technology and see how the world has changed so far. So this is a little bit about myself. What we are going to do today, uh, pretty much you can see here, uh, we are looking at marketing evolution. This is a big word, um, but also uh, I want to have a little bit more discussion with relation to um, marketing career and a little bit about the um, course that we have at uh, Stratford School and University of Waterloo. That's a global business and digital arts. Um, when we leave this session, I hope that I um, have two questions for you to ponder us on. Is marketing an art or a science? And will the marriage of marketing and technology always a success? So this is something that I'd like to um, maybe just give it, maybe put it back to you to think uh, after this session. Okay, so before we start, um, if you are online and you have a second device, uh, probably a, a smartphone, uh, can you um, scan this code and tell me what you think about marketing? I guess that you may have some idea, but it's, it's great if you... I can share it uh, with me what do you think about marketing. So uh, even though this is a keynote, I still hope to have a little bit more interactions with you along the way. So uh, if possible, I just stop this, um, the, the PowerPoint um, and to have a look at what do you think? I hope that you still can hear me well, right? So let's say what, um, if you can just scan this code and tell me, then I'm going to bring up the screen that show us what you think. I hope that you can um, see my screen. Yes? Yeah, we can see your screen. I just wanted to say that to our participants that if you don't have a second device, then you can just go to uh, slido.com and then use the number that's written down there. So just on a different tab, you can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so can you can you try to scan this or go to um, the website with the code? 
just want to have a little bit more uh, from your end, from your end. So what do you think marketing is all about? Um, I just want to... Okay, so what do you think marketing is all about? If anyone um, are there, could you let, let me know what you think? I hope to have some um, ideas from this post. Any comments and ideas about marketing? What do you think? Maybe um, I will spend few, uh, a few more minutes on this and then I move on. I hope that these uh, QR codes still working. <laughs> you can you can uh, log in and just share some ideas about what do you think marketing is. Okay, a few more minutes. If anyone has some ideas about this. Okay. Um, so it seems like a little bit hard to answer. Um, sorry to interrupt. I think you might have to click on show results. Oh, yes. Um, normally, oh, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. And, and thank you. Um, has for having me out. Sometimes I just forget very simple thing. Uh, yes, I have a couple ideas here. So it's about business, yes. Creativity, yes. It's about attracting buyers. I like this idea. So a lot of time people talking about marketing is seducing. It's about attracting, it's about appealing. It's about campaigns, uh, marketing, advertising, right? It's about sales, increasing sales. Um, these, these are very interesting points. Um, you're talking a lot about marketing functions, activities, what is it for, right? We are talking about sales, profits, trying to get um, buyers, customers. Yes, I mean, these are all right. But in today's time, um, maybe there, are, there, there is more new differences in terms of what marketing is. Um, so in today's short journey, we are going to walk through this market and see whether, is it all about marketing? Is it all about tr attracting people? Is it all about campaigns, advertising, uh, trying to appeal, trying to attract them? So I hope that by the end of the, of the presentation, we, we can actually have a little more uh, concise definition for ourselves. So for today's discussion, pretty much what I would like to do is to walk you through these five areas of marketing and we call it marketing 1.0 to marketing 5.0. And this is based on uh, one of the, um, my very, very favorite marketing guru, uh, Philip Collins, but also with other authors. And they look at the changes in how we do marketing. And you can also see from this uh, quick capture of the differences um, from marketing 1.1 to marketing 5.0, right? So let's let's get a little bit more uh, into what it is. So when we look at marketing 1.1, so it's it's what we call very product driven, and of course it started like years and years ago in, in the 1950s, um, and there's a there was quite specific social economic uh, conditions of that time. So that's the rise of the baby boomers and their parents. And at that time, the key objectives for businesses is to create perfect product and services. And the attention was pretty much on product development. Uh, if you look at the, 
the pictures in, in, in my screen now. You can see uh, one, uh, the, one of the vehicle, right? If you can recognize this, this, this is a Model T. Um, this is what we call the first cab by Henry Ford. And it also, uh, this also, um, the years and years ago, of course, but that was the time when people dreamt of having um, a faster vehicles. And these cars came out and, and at that time, it's the, what we can see here is this era very much focused on what was offered. So the market observed, uh, absorbed all that was uh, offered in, the, uh, in, in that um, market. So uh, they, don't, they did not actually care much about, let's say, um, the specifications or not too much uh, into the price because there were not many choices at that time. And, and people had a lot of money spending power. So that's why this idea of marketing for one for zero is a great one, right? Um, but of course, um, why company were doing what they, what they uh, what they did, it's pretty much the focus on efficiency. Even the, with the Model T, um, if, you in, if anyone read about Henry Ford and, and the first care, and Henry Ford uh, did say that any customer can have a car painted in any color um, that he wants, so long as it is black. So this, this kind of a statement indicate that the focus for efficiency and uniformity um, the question here is, is this marketing approach too relevant in, in our times that we just focus on the product or production efficiency? You can also see in the slide, um, the, the, what we call the brick phone. Um, this was also my first phone when I graduated I, and I was excited at that time having this phone. And this phone is pretty much in the same marketing approach, very, very product driven. And Nokia, which was the brand at that time. And in, I remember in um, around 19, uh, 1986, and it was the dominating um, player in the mobile industry. They, they actually occupy 52% of the world market share. Um, and they make like millions of millions of these small, simple, efficient phones. But then by the 20s, uh, like 1000, um, 2001, um, their market share shrinked. And it means that now, if you just sell what you have, it does not work. And, and that also led to the fatal uh, mistake of Nokia. And, and you may, maybe nowadays you don't see much of that Nokia on, in the mobile phone market. So they, they did well. They focused a lot on efficiency on the product, on, the, uh, uh, on production. But now it's, I mean, things change and the market condition changed. Um, and that's why uh, companies think about the second um, market marketing area, that, that's what we call marketing 2.0, the customer centric. Of course, there are, um, there, there are also some conditions that actually push that to happen. But if you think about this stage and you compare with the marketing 1.0 era, at this time, of course, there are some economic recessions and also the consumer spending power decrease. Um, but the, the, the idea that you um, people would buy what you sell is, is not relevant anymore. So at this time, um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of pressure on businesses to focus more on customers' needs and wants. So in other words, marketing 2.0 indicates that it was no longer accepted to sell what you want. As a marketer, as a business, you have to research, understand the customers, segment the market, like decide which customer segment you want to sell and what you can sell to them to be successful. So during the four times, there was maybe only one or very few suppliers or producers, and there are millions of customers. But in the later stage, uh, things changed and it's, it's was the other way around. And you could see that there were hundreds of brands of vehicles all trying 
um, to get the attention of the customer. So competitions increase. Um, and if to, to illustrate the ideas of customer centric and the change in, in marketing, if I bring up these four cars and I put it up to you, I hope that you can recognize some of these. And my question is, how are they different? I mean, how are they different in terms of who they want to sell, the prices and the way they, they are trying to attract customers, how they want the customer to know who they are and remember who they are. So these are the just four examples I want to bring up here. And, and if anyone happened to like can bring it up, your phone if you're allowed to speak, um, then you can you can tell us what do you think about these two different car brands. Um, if you look at this one, this one is the uh, Mercedes um, Maybach. Um, this is an Indian car. Uh, it's a Tata Nano brand. This one is Tata uh, Partner, and this one is the Mini Cooper. And they are so much different in who they want to sell these cars. And these cars are, are also very much different from each other, not just in terms of the prices, but also in terms of the features, in terms of the quality. Um, this one, as you can see here, um, this is this is a Maybach. It uh, cost normally starting from like two hundred and and fifteen thousand dollars. Compared to this one is around three thousand um, dollars. This one is around like six, um, no, thirty five thousand, and this one is about fifty. And they target uh, different customer segment. So of course, this one with the uh, Mercedes um, Maybach, you know who they sell this car. They are the top end of the luxury. Um, markets segment. So let's say they, they're selling to the upper tier of the luxury car category. Those who are elitist shoppers, like the top 1% of the richest, like these are maybe the business executives, the, those who are after ultra luxury qualities, they can earn like uh, $400,000 per year minimum. And these, these um, target customers, right? They don't just purchase for, for um, practicality, um, but uh, rather um, what what they sell, they, they sell based on um, what the, the emotion of those customers. The customers don't just need practicality, functionality, but they want to have the special feeling. Uh, they want to have special emotions. They want to have their own style. Um, they want to get people to know about who they are and, and what their lifestyle is, right? Why the Tata Nano, they um, actually target the what we call um, the bottom of the pyramid, like the people who are quite low income coming from rural, semi urban markets. Um, um, and then we see the um, Toyota partner. These um, the cars are mostly uh, those um, maybe family those with families. They have um, middle they are middle incomers and they look for efficiencies and so good for value. Um, and they may be in their like forty to fifty uh, in terms of age. And um, and also we look at this small uh, and very. Uh, cool car, right? The Mini Cooper, they aim at the young, um, we call the young affluent. So those young people, they live in the urban area, what they're looking for, um, they're looking for adventure, but also they love to have fun. They have a lot, uh, the size, the excitement. And very interesting is this small size car um, is for the urban drawers like those who live in a small city with small narrow streets so you can see here um, there's a change in terms of how people make the products sell the products so the idea of whether you are going to um, make the key and trying to find the lock whether it, it is the best idea or whether 
you actually go the other way around. The, the, you know the lock, right? And you're trying to fashion the key. So this is the idea of customer-centric marketing. It's more about how you understand your customers uh, and, and also their needs and wants and, and trying to de develop something that they really want to have. And, and that's what we look at in terms of marketing 2.0, the customer central, the customer centric. Okay, so moving on, um, we are looking at uh, marketing 3.0. So now we see a change uh, in the way that we market, we create the product, we communicate to customers, and also in terms of how we deliver the values to them. Uh, so as you can see here that with marketing 3.0, um, this is a human central area. So marketing uh, and marketers and business people, they see customers not just as a consumers, but as a whole human of mind, heart, spirit. So customers or consumers now, they have anxiety, which is not always related to products and services. Sometimes they want to make a change to the world. They want to make a world better place. They want to to make some social impacts. They want to be friendly to environment. And then that change in what people's needs and want uh, push companies to change how they are going to, to sell their products or what they are going to sell. So if you look at this one, uh, this is, this is um, oh, sorry, just want to bring this one because this is a friend of mine, um, but in my home country in Vietnam, and he, he was much younger than me, of course. Um, and he was a, a young entrepreneur who, um, among very few um, local uh, entrepreneurs who develop a fashion uh, watch brand, and really a Vietnamese one. Of course, there are many other uh, foreign uh, brands in Vietnam, but this is one of the very few uh, local um, Vietnamese entrepreneurs who like really want to focus on, on fashion brand. And, you know, when I talked to him and I say, why did you come up with this business idea? And he said that he, he, his mission, he, he saw himself in, uh, in the mission of accompanying the Vietnam, Vietnamese young people on their journey to conquer the dream. Why? Because if you happen to see the name of the brand, it's, it's, it's Kunan. Kunan in Latin, it means why not? So he said that as a young people, Vietnamese one, you have a dream. Do you, do you dare to dream and you dare to do? Why not? So that's why he, see that. He, he said that his business is not about selling the watch. It's about selling the bonus, selling the the. Uh, inspiration, selling the dream of doing something that maybe many others don't think that we can do. So you can see here, uh, as I said, that this is this is a new way of doing marketing. So it's more focused on the human side rather than on the consumption part, right? And of course, as you see here, um, there's also some um, social conditions, social orders um, as in the late um, 2000s um, with the rise of the Gen Y and also the information um, um, technology, as well as a number of scandals. I mean, suddenly the society questioned the role of businesses in terms of just making profits. Um, and then after these uh, scandals, um, businesses are also under more pressure um, to do something good to the society rather than just being there and making money and, and that's also put more um i mean pressure to onto businesses uh, i think that you also recognize this brand because it's very familiar to you but as i said here um martin 3.0 and, and the era of human centricity um also push or encourage companies to see a bigger mission and the mission now is not just in terms of the product related, but also in terms of society related. And as you can see here, the mission and the goals of dance is more in terms of the social impact. So the interesting one is that you have seen marketing 1.0, marketing 2, 
0.0 and marking 3.0. And we can, uh, we can see the shift from product centric, which is very functional, to customer oriented, which is more emotional, how people feel, right? The emotion. And then to more of the spiritual part, the human centric one. It's more about values um, rather than just the product and its functions and its feature. So, um, what we can see here is that this, I just want to bring this up. Um, and again, the question after uh, every like um, marketing error is, is that is this marketing approach or marketing principle still relevant? Um, as I can, as one of the um, research by McKinsey, and this is what they found out that yes, people now tend to buy more because of the values those company embrace. Uh, and this is true. I mean, I talked to a friend of mine, um, Millennium One, and she said that uh, all the brands that now she, like, she, she sticks with is all about the founders, is all about the company's values. So this is very interesting um, observation to see that, yes, as we move on, in terms of how we can get closer to the customers, how we can make them happy, how can we, how we can wow them. It's not just about the products, but it's also about the values part, right? It's more about the spiritual side. Okay, I hope that you're still okay so far with um, what we look at here. All right, moving, um, again, we are moving into the marketing 4.0. Um, as we say that, it seems to us that when we look at marketing 3.0, it seems to be a complete cycle uh, of marketing, right? Um, so what marketing 4.0 is all about and how it added to the way that we deliver, we create, we deliver, we communicate our customers. So marketing 4.0 is what we see as a tradition to digital. And of course, this is when we see the rise of mobile internet, social media, e-commerce. And also there's a change in the customer part to purchase and how people make purchase, right? This is what we call uh, the customer's journey. Um, uh, and also this, the interesting part about marketing 4.0 is all still with human uh, centricity, but also we look a lot into the connectivity part and the community part. I'm not quite sure whether you can hear, you can see this, um, this one. And uh, this is um, just, let me just do this and see a quick one. So this is um, Burberry Digital Store. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure whether you can, um, you can hear it because just to have a quick look. Since I'm not quite sure this sales comes through. So um, this is Burberry Digital Store. The idea here is that the way people make a purchase uh, has changed, right? So you can see here, this is what they call a digital store, but it's actually the blends of both physical and digital. And I hope that you, I think that you, you remember this brand. It's uh, a British uh, luxury uh, fashion brand. Um, and, and what we um, saw during the 2012 is that Burberry opened its uh, largest store. This is a physical one. Um, but as the CEO, Burberry's CEO at that time, Angela Andren said, walking through the doors is just like walking into the website. And that's what they call the Burberry world life. Um, what we see here is that there seem to be the blur between the lines of physical and digital one. So when you walk into the physical one, you still see it as it is on the digital one. Um, this, this stage is very, very interesting because the way people communicate, the way people shop has changed. And at this time, we talk a lot in marketing 
about um, the ideas of cosmogenies. So cosmos move from different steps, different processes from being aware to be engaged with that brand or that product or that company to feel excited and then use and buy and buy more and become a lawyer um, and, and advocate for that brand. So these ideas of cosmogenies um, actually have companies to look into another part of what they're doing, looking more in terms of the customer's experience. Because this customer journey is not just a journey, it is a value journey. It means that if you do well in this space, you can actually have a lot of value in terms of sales, in terms of profits, of, and of course, the customer loyalty. Um, and also we mentioned about this customer journey, we mentioned about the touch point, the service encounters that the, the consumers, the customers, the user have with the company. And, and we um, see that as a businesses, we see that um, customers, they may have different, different um, steps here in their journey. And there are different touch points, be it digital or physical. Um, if you want to improve the customer experience, you as a businesses you really need to understand how you can influence this touch point so that you can leave a positive and exciting, a pleasant experience so that you can have um, the, the customers not just get a product, but also they, they get in love with the product and they, are, they become the lawyer customers. So having said that, I just want to highlight that in this in this marketing 4.0, it's a transition. It's it's a movement, the shift from fiscal to the to the digital one. And and also it actually um, produce produces a lot of pressure on company in terms of how they uh, can serve uh, the customer better. So when you look at this one, I just want to bring this up as an example again to illustrate the ideas of um, the shift between tradition to digital and also about how a fashion brands can really put the human, the, the customers at the center and operates around that so that they can refresh, they can while the customer's experience. So, so these are some of the activities that they have done. But if you have read the news sometime or you are um, interested in this brand, you may have heard about this um, Burberry as one of the, like the top um, digital savvy company, but also the uh, kind of pioneer, especially in terms of retailing industry, um, because they, did a lot, um, they did have a lot initiated back in uh, 2009. I mean, at that time, social media uh, was in its uh, nascent phase of development. But at that time, they did make some big decisions. And they said that, yes, our investment now was all uh, is all about digital. And of course, not just in terms of technology platforms, but also in terms of content. Why so? Because they did understand a lot about their customers, who they are, how can how they connect uh, with the customers. And I remember the CEO um, Angela Andren that say that if our customer goes social, we have to go social. Wherever the customers are, we are there. So that's why we see that what they did is they actually have contents, they reach customer in different channels and, and they try to make the most powerful experiences for the customer in every channel, be it physical, digital or augmented uh, luxury. And interesting, like they have very, very outstanding digital reach, like 50 million fans globally, and they work on 15 platforms in, in 11 language. So they're trying to connect to the global customers where they, wherever they are. And also in terms of human cent, uh, centricity, um, personal, personalized, uh, for personalization is also their focus. What they are trying to do is trying to understand uh, about their customers. Um, about their needs and want to be different. 
um, to exhibit their style. So you can see here, this is one of uh, very successful marketing campaign in terms of um, what they call the trend. And um, the, the art of the trend code is a digital campaign, but it allows the fans to take pictures with their iconic uh, change code and share on the Burberry Michael website so that other visitors can come to comments and share. Um, so of course, what they did is they do understand the needs, the customers needs to be social, to communicate, to show their style. Um, and also they know that um, trust is very important. And, and pretty much of this campaign is user generated content. Um, and they have very success, um, big success in terms of having like 7 million view uh, within six months and still going on. Uh, also they have um, other, what we call here uh, in terms of uh, built in user general contents, uh, for example, like in term, when they launch their um, um, lipsticks products, so they, so they have interesting, what they call here Burberry Kisses, um, also on digital platform, so which um, allow the customer's lip imprint onto a digital postcard um, and, and using the Burberry's um, five shade lipsticks uh, for free. Um, the connectivity is, is also another uh, thing I want to highlight. Um, so back in 2009, um, Burberry had decided to, uh, they decided to go social, they go on, go onto Facebook. At that time, it was, uh, I mean, it was seen as one of the, maybe uh, not the best decision because they, many other luxury brands uh, did not think that it's a good, it was a good thing to do because they think that going on social media would, that would be damaging to their brands. Um, but they did decide it. And also they have, um, what they call like have um, the sign up for tweeters to have the buy now button, which allow user to instantaneously purchase the brands as they view uh, on the runway uh, online. So, and of course that's not to mention about the Burberry, um, Burberry service, which handle customers inquiry 24 hours today to make sure the customer satisfaction and also have direct connection with the customers. So again, this is what um, we look at in terms of the marketing 4.0. And of course, marketing 4.0 is not everything. Now we are looking at the presence, right? And, and also we are looking at the future. Um, so the ideas of marketing on technology in the, um, in the last era it's it's more yeah it touches on technology but in a quite basic way it's not the mainstream but uh, and also marketing in 4.0 focus a lot on how to serve the customer in the hybrid like between physical digital touch points um, by online by in different channels physical um, and and the digital one uh, what we can see here is um, this time we are talking about like uh, this is a uh, what we call market 5.0 and that's what we call technology for humanity which is more of course su more superior uh, it's more than just distributing contents and social media or have um, the omnichannel present um, marketers and businesses now they have to adapt to the new um, reality the new normal and in fact the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the digitalizations of businesses. And with lockdowns, physical distancing, um, now businesses are forced to move to the new touch lit and digital reality. And this is what we talk about, they are drivers, okay? So drivers come from um, the technology side, but also the driver comes from the social perspective. I actually capture a few um, key technologies here, and I, I guess that you know what um, what are these uh, that I have put up here, and these are the key um, of the new tech and uh, the next text here. And we are talking um, about um, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, blockchain. Um, we are talking about the 
via an AI, um, and also we're talking about the uh, natural language programming. So um, I think I do not need to go into these details because you may be very familiar with this. Uh, we're just looking at the implications for the marketers. And again, um, as we see that as we go online, we are more digital. Now, customers and consumers may be, become less patient. As one of the Microsoft study, they say that if you have a website and the website, it, it takes like more than a quarter of a second longer to load, you lose traffic to the competitors. And it takes like 10 seconds or more, um, customers will lose patience and go to another website. So we can see nowadays how to engage with the customers. It's not easy, right? Uh, because now people find us very annoying. They want to skip that. And now how can how could brands connect, engage, acquire, and keep their customers? Um, if you remember previously, I talked about um, the customer journeys. This idea still focus a lot of our customer journey. So the way we can um, engage, interact, acquire, or keep the customers depends a lot on how you understand their journey, but also in terms of how you know the moment of truth, where you can really make it happen. So in marketing, we discuss a lot about the moment of truth. And um, Traditionally, it's just the first moment of truth, which is when the customer make a purchase. And the second moment of truth is when they use that. Now they look beyond that first and second. They look at the zero moment of truth when they Google it, like when they have a problem and they try to find it. But it could actually happen before that, like even before the problem exists. So how could companies, businesses, um, knows when and how they can actually leave a positive um, footprint or they can get themselves remembered or known um, by, by the potential customers. So um, that's why we say here um, in, in the context of the marketing 5.0, we talk a lot about those um, technology in terms of AI. Um, in terms of um, artificial intelligence, in, uh, in terms of blockchain technology. And all, with all of this, it actually allows marketers to do their jobs so much more efficient. So just bring this up here. Um, you may know this brand. This is um, AB InBev, and uh, they actually have uh, under the portfolio 500 different types of beers, but you may know about Corona and but why is it? Very interesting point about this is that if I asked you a question like what goes into uh, the beer now, of course, it's easy to come up with, up with the ideas like the water, um, the malt, the hops, the rice, the yeast. Um, but now, interestingly, what comes into the beer is also machine learning. Artificial, artificial intelligence, because using those um, uh, analytics platforms, they can actually find out the best way to make um, the best taste, all right? So also, I mean, in terms of product development, um, what happened here is that it allowed company to really knowing how what the customer wants. So the same with uh, IB InBev, like PepsiCo, what they do is that they can actually make their product, new product development process much quicker by skipping many steps. So they can use uh, AI, machine learning, um, and also predictive algorithms to envision what the new product will be like, what features is, is important. And those predictions are have better accuracy. How they can do so, of course, they have in-depth analysis of the customer's conversation uh, on the social media. So using some social listening tools, um, but also in other area, manufacturing, of course, I'm not going to look uh, very much into that, but even with um, product placements and advertisement as well. Um, now, a company actually 
can use AI to develop advertising with minimum involvement of, of the human personnel. For example, like Lexus, um, they also they they analyze our winning campaigns for the past 15 years to create a new one for its new year season. Or it can also help you to have customers inside, which is quite might be familiar to map use when you do the Amazon search and you see that they come up um, with uh, like suggestions, which is like basically what you want because they um, they can use the AI big data to review the shopping patterns um, of, of the customer of the shoppers and they can recommend the right products um, and, and contents based on their shopping profile. There are much more I, um, I'm thinking uh, I'm bringing it up here, uh, not just in the back um, uh, office operation build, so in the customer's facing operations. And all of these technologies, the voice based visual search, or um, the ads that you, um, you want to see, uh, personalizations of art, the way you want to communicate, um, the always on chat box. Um, or the like the effortless checkout. Uh, and this is what we can see here, how technologies allow um, company to better serve the customers throughout their customer journey. Okay, there are a couple of others, um, marketing uh, 5.0 um, technologies, how they actually can wow the customers even before um, the purchase, they call pre-purchase experience with L'Oreal or Nike, um, and also with uh, some local business as well. I just want to move into one more section. I think that because of the time limit, um, just want to have a quick chat about metaverse and marketing. And uh, even though there is still um, skepticism about metaverse and, and marketing, I believe that Metaverse is not just a flash in the pan, right? Um, Everyone, I guess that maybe if you are a tech savvy person, you have heard about Metaverse, right? So it's an evolution of today's internet. It's something that we can be immersed in rather than just look at. Um, of course, with the use of VR and AI, that immersed that immersive environment is possible that allows us to span the virtual and physical allow us to have virtual identity have transactions um, uh, create content so um, i like a, a very interesting example of kathy and kathy talk about the future life when we can envision ourselves like wake up and start the morning routine with our voice um, advisor and we can go to when we go to the closet we can look at our volumetric versions something like the avatar or hologram of ourselves and, and can try on um, the clothes virtually using that volumetric versions um, and because it has all the measure and we can select what we are going to wear and maybe because of the internet of things um, they can also I mean it is also recommended in terms of which outfits would be would be maybe most appropriate for particular meetings or a, a particular appointment. Or maybe we can have a, a lipstick that has a digital haptic nanoparticles embedded so that we can greet our beloved people who are in other countries and, can, and feel the embrace of the kids. So we can see here, yes, the conversion of physical and digital, and it seemed to be exciting new extension of the human creativity. So why meta, uh, metaverse and marketing? Um, yes, so as, as we can see here, uh, when we look at the metaverse, uh, we can see enormous opportunity to engage with the consumers in an entire new ways. So it means a, a more innovative directions for company to connect to the uh, to the customers. Why it is important, of course, because we see um, the potential for it. Like when we look at Gen Z consumers who are in their mid twenties, and they are the incoming earning force, right? Um, and also when we look at the generations, um, the game industry and in the gaming industry, with like as they said like 67% of the Roblox 15 million daily user are under the age of 16. So it, 
they are the whole new generation for metaverse. Um, as you know, like game, gaming is, is what also about part of the metaverse. And, and also we see the development of technologies. Um, we see the online commerce as a mainstream. Um, metaverse, marketing in the metaverse is, is a great prospect because most of the um, Markins' uh, recent study of the executives, they will mention about the positive impact of metaverse on uh, businesses as uh, in particular marketing. So um, if we look at these slides, and I, this isn't um, not the exhaustive list, but these are some of the examples of the companies that have been in this game. They have they have done marketing in the metaverse and you can see that like, the wide variety of different industries not not just with the luxury brands fashion brands but also like beverage um and also with the fast food like electronics and automobile um entertainment and hospitality so um you can see that businesses now seem to be like quite excited and enthusiastic about this new space. Um, I have a couple example about um, how company are doing this. Um, and, and you can see here, and maybe you can search it up um, with um, Vans, with uh, Nike Lane, um, with Balenciaga, and, and also with uh, Forever 21. So these are just a very few examples of how company uh, trying to engage with the customers. And as I said that, what businesses are doing is they want to improve, they want to increase, enhance the brand awareness. They want to appeal their, um, their core customers. For example, like then they have um, what we call the Zen's War on Roblox. Um, so in which they have interactive skate park. Um, and also they, they allow the visitors to virtually explore the skate size with friends. Um, they can earn points through game playing. They can spend on virtual sneakers and Apple. And also um, they, they can also build their customer skateboard uh, in their virtual skate uh, shop. And, and they have done this very successfully and engaged uh, like more than uh, like around 50 million visitors. And the same thing with uh, Forever, 20 fun, Forever 21. This is a retail session giant, and they participate in the metaverse fashion work, and also engage with the customers in the metaverse marketplace. The interesting about this brand is that they not just have they um, set up the shops for visitors to enter and browse on, on Metaverse, on Roblox, but also they provide visitors with a digital store that is um, like wait uh, thing to be refurbished and filled with Forever 21 uh, item for sale. So the players can compete to become the best, um, maybe retailer shop in towns. They have different districts uh, so that the user can find items and make friends and develop stores. So a lot of what you have seen is the way that businesses nowadays, they are trying to get closer to the, uh, the potential customers. And in this case, they are the young generations and, and they want to set the digital footprints and they want to increase the revenue um, um, in the future. And, and that's why we can see here, uh, there's a lot of other example about um, how company um, interacts, um, how they actually do marketing um, on the metaverse. I think that I'm, I'm not going into the these uh, in much more details because of the time. Okay, so uh, you can see here technologies as enable marketing, right? Um, and, and if we look at the numbers of different marketing, it's enormous. If you look at the number of marketing uh, solutions, there's also an illusion um, from year to years. And in 2019, it's um, 7,000. But up to like the uh, 2020, it's, it's about 10,000 different marketing solutions. So like there are solutions in terms of social media, in terms of um, e-commerce um, and, and like wherever you, the customers 
journey the touch points that all right you can see that there are always solution for it so yeah okay so i think i have been talking a lot uh, what would be the key takeaways i want you to remember maybe after a lot of discussion about the um about uh, different marketing approaches like from the marketing 1.0 to marketing 5.0 um, what marketing is all about this is a question um, that i actually put at the beginning um, of the presentation but what i want to highlight now is marketing is a lot human right so it's all about Every, it's, it's about every experience that the customers have. It's not just in terms of the product or the service. Now it's more about the whole journey, right? Marketing, as I said, it's about delivering values. It's not just about the activity. It's more about how you can deliver the value to the customers. Uh, you may be engaged at, in different functions, activity, but at the end of the day, do you wow the customers? Do they make them satisfy? Um, this is a very important thing, right? And, and I, I love um, one of the um, like very, uh, very interesting observation by um, a well-known marketing guru, Sir Gordon. And, and I, he's, he said that money is all about making positive changes. Um, and humans have to play a, a core part of that like in everything we do. We have to put in patience. We have to put in empathy. We really need to understand who they are, what they need, what encounter, what experience they go through. Um, so this is this is also what I want to, uh, I, and I hope that you can um, have this as a key takeaway. It's, it's everything is about human, right? And um, as, as, a person's uh, a professional in the future. Um, I hope that you keep it as as a compass in everything you are going to do. Be engineer or software developer or marketers, um, and also the uh, metaverse in the future and the ideas about test and learn. So businesses nowadays they cannot wait until everything is clear, is uh, is well defined or clear. Now. Um, it seems to, to us that they are in that um, test and learn mode. And, and this is also uh, what I would like to, um, I, hope, I hope that you can have it as a, as a takeaway, like in that test learn uh, mindset. Um, I actually want to, to have a quick touch on um, the program, but because of the time, I just want to bring it up here. So if you are interested in doing something which has um, the technology components, but also the business components and the creative uh, creativity component, then maybe later on um, in your journey, you may want to consider um, University's Waterloo's program of uh, global business and digital arts. And of course, you can have more information um, as um, as, as when the, the time comes and you can actually uh, get more um, information from the uh, recruit, recruitment student recruitment teams or the information day of the university. Okay, I think um, I just want to bring this up as a, a big thank you to everyone who are patient to be here with me until this hour. Um, and also for the opportunity for me as well to um, to learn. I mean, looking back on what has happened over the past uh, decades and also see the futures um, that lies um, ahead of us. Okay, I think that's pretty much for my end. I hope that um, if you have any other questions, um, feel free to, to bring it up and, and ask. Thank you so much for your presentation. So we do have a question in the chat and it says, what are some careers in marketing? Oh, okay. I actually, um, I actually have, um, I mean, a slice about career. 
Um, because I saw that in the there's uh, one workshop a marketing career um, just in front of this work uh, this um, session, so that's why I skipped that part. I mean I'm not talking about marketing could career, but since we have that questions, uh, can I just very quickly um, talk on this? And of course, if you would like to have a little bit more information, I'm happy to be connected to you as well. So. Um, if you're talking just about marketing, this is this is what um, it can be. I mean, in terms of marketing, there's a lot of spaces you can try, you can test, and you can see and see how it fits with what you want to be in. I mean, when you talk about marketing, remember we're talking about marketing as um, as as uh, from the consumer um, perspective, the customer journey, right? So you can do in every part of that journey. But if we have to look at some particular, like um, quite dominant, um, quite like prevalent uh, areas. So you can see here, there are different options in terms of marketing career. So if you are more in terms of like a social persons, you may want to be looking in more about like um, PR, public relations, uh, dealing with the brand's image or you know, talking to the external stakeholders, making sure the brand is well positioned in the way the company wants it to be. Or if you are seeing yourself more technical person, you can focus on SEO, like uh, the search engine optimization. Uh, if you love something more traditional, like advertising, like promotions, like distributions, then you, you may look into that uh, particular uh, what we call here uh, traditional marketing so traditional marketing if you are into marketing um, or if you have uh, read about it it's 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 about product uh, it's about um, pricing it's about distribution right um, uh, it's all promotions communication right so these are about the basic traditional marketing and of course now we have digital marketing as well with the growth of all those social media technologies so there um, there's something that you want to look at in terms of social medias uh, in paid marketing or content marketing yeah? writing contents uh, for the brands for the products so these are just a few things that you want to that you may want to look into um, and and um, if you look and into like <laughs> I just put it as a top 50 marketing charts by career level um, so you can see here like there are communications um, there are product side there are content side there are social media one um, for example and then from for digital like you can see here in terms of the um, digital marketing like more in terms of how you can engage with the customers uh, on the digital channels right or you can look into the more at the strategy level like in terms of how we are how we are going to position our product in the customer's mind do you want it to people to perceive your brand as a friendly low um, like kind of affordable or one you want uh, customers to remember you as a uh, cultural luxury brands for example or you want to look into e-commerce it's, it's more about like the online uh, trading online selling things or you want to look into how you can come up first like as a as a company's brand right you want um, that when the customer search for like a holiday um for example, like the holiday house, for example, um, you want your name to come up first. So as, as a C, uh, SEO uh, manager, you have to make sure that you can build on the content organically, but also you can have other channels to have your names or your brands to come up in the first page of the search results. Otherwise, um, you may not, uh, I mean, your brands would uh, lose um, the, I mean, competitiveness to the other uh, competitors. So these are some, just some of the examples um, of what marketing, um, marketing um, jobs are like. And of course, this is just a very uh, broad view. But also I want to uh, look into this one. And uh, as I said that, 
um, the customer's journey. And you can see that as a company, as a brand, you have to make sure that positive and great and powerful experience is in every single part of this journey. And in order to do that, we need to have an army beh behind that one, right? So like you can see yourself, like not purely marketing, but also marketing related, right? So at some point in time, like when, when you're working in terms of design, when you're working in engineering, when you're trying to develop the best user experience, um, you can see that, yes, I mean, in order to deliver the best um, experience throughout the journey and in order to have more um, positive moment of truth with the customers so that they, they love you and they want to be your advocate. So you can see here that different things that happen here and also it involves different departments and different jobs um, as we move on when we look at uh, marketing jobs and, and technology. I hope that it um, answered your answer, even though it's a little bit general, actually. Yep. All right, thank you for the answer. Um, I think they had one other question that says, do you have any advice for high school students interested in tech and marketing? Oh, okay, okay. Let me tell you this, um, I mean, in marketing, um, you know, this is hard, this is hard. And when, when I'm just talking about marketing and, and in today's time, doing marketing is not easy. Why? Because you have a hundreds, not, that's not to mention diff, uh, like several hundreds or thousands different brands. And how can you get yourself remembered um, and loved um, and also uh, have a fans or support? The same thing I would like to, um, when we talk about like the career path for those who are interested um, in marketing and technology, you see that um, this, is, this is a short journey, but it can, it can be quite overwhelming with uh, a lot of information, a lot of things going on. For, um, for, the, um, for the career, what I, can, what I can advise is that like, Think about what you are more interested in. I mean, marketing is broad. Technology is even broader. So how can you find your niche? Like, for example, like if you are a really um, a social media uh, person and you are very active and you know a lot about social media, how about looking in that particular niche, find your own niche, and, and, and trying to sharpen your skills and your, your knowledge and your understanding. So in other words, like it would be a little bit overwhelming trying to do many things uh, and trying to, to learn everything and, and hope to do everything well. My advice is to find out what is your real, uh, what is your real love, what you really want to look into at uh, like in that one um, and, and spend more time reading, looking into it, uh, reading, talking to people in that area, experimenting few things. Um, if you are more into like social medias, for example, like um, try different, like, quite available. I mean, sometimes it's free online apps that allow you to understand, like, for example, like we have a one tool we call social media listening, right? How can we, how we know what, the customers are talking about us, like more in depth into um, the the meaning of their content, what they really um, named in in those conversations. So, what I can say here, as I said, find a niche. The niche here is your love, so that you have more patient and also passion, and also it allows you to be more persistent over time. If you want to be out there, outstanding, let's do something really well, like find your own niche and, and be the outstanding in that niche rather than trying to know many things and trying to do many things. But when it comes to how, whether you are the best one to perform that, um, there are several thousands who can do the same. So it, it, it would not be the best way to go. Um, and I guess that that would be my um, my suggestions um, in terms of technology and um, 
and, and uh, marketing. And I remember I put the question to you uh, at the beginning. Um, do you think that with marketing and technology, companies always have success? Uh, we, if we know marketing with no technology, can we be a, a big success? I mean, it depends a lot on what we focus on, what we know, how we know what the, our customers need. The same thing. When we look at your career, right? You want to, you want to do something that um, you want to uh, be the first choice in some area where uh, companies now really want um, like a particular skills, uh, particular jobs, but not just a superficial level. It's more about the in-depth, it's more, more about the competence. So that's why I would say like maybe um, um, a small step, um, but it's worth test and learn. Um, maybe you haven't found out right now, maybe we can do some testing, right? Get into it, do something about it and see whether this is the area that you are really passionate about. Um, that's why I can say test and learn and find out your niche and sharpen that niche skill. I think that's pretty much for me. All right. Well, thank you so much for your answers and your presentation. You sound so passionate about this and that's great to see. So like, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge with us. I'm sure we all learned something new today. And uh, it was a pleasure having you all here. Uh, tomorrow we will have a UX panel. That'll be our first event at 11.30. So we hope to see you there. And so that concludes our presentation for today. Again, thank you so much to Lando for coming out and thank you to everyone else as well. Have a great My night. pleasure. Yeah. All the best. Um, yes, and, and it's my pleasure. And, and also, it's really my great joy to be here, um, just talking to you about what I'm passionate about as well. So thank you, Haas organizers, and, and all those who, are, who has um, made the time being here today. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.